Next, let's hear about the exciting things happening in Starstake with updates from Chris Hawk, co-founder and CEO of Starstake, and really a lot of the mind and brains behind this entire operation, uh, putting together some of the strategy as we're looking at launch. And he's going to be sharing our current launch plans, some feature updates, and a sneak peek behind the scenes into a demo. Take it away, Chris. Hey, thanks, guys. So I'm super excited to be talking about Star Stake in front of you in this Wire episode because there's been so much going on and, and we're right at the eve now of releasing version one to the market, to creators, to users and fans and audiences all over the world. Uh, we've been talking nonstop to uh, whether that be artists themselves, their agents, their managers, PR companies, um, affiliates, you name it. It's just been nonstop conversation after conversation. And I will tell you, uh, as I I've always said it's the response has been overwhelmingly positive even during a time when maybe the market sentiment is is a little bit off and down you know obviously the markets are down and you know there's you know irresponsible things going on in in, in crypto and in these exchanges it really doesn't matter so many people are excited to see what we put together uh, and I believe that's because we put star state together to in a way that we've wanted to remove it from the box that is all that other stuff. We've really tried to take cryptocurrency out of the equation and, and create no reliance there, even though in the inside of it, there's, you know, tokens being used and obviously in the blockchain and all these things that we do, technically it's there, but for consumers, we take it out of that. And we wanted to create something uh, that was very usable and accessible. And I'll talk about that. But in the last, I would say, 60 to 90 days, we've been working, uh, obviously wrapping up the technology, testing, going through QA procedures just to make sure that the quality is where it needs to be, functions are there. And, and in that process, we've learned a lot. And and that's why, you know, we originally, we were talking about releasing this in November, and then that got pushed back. And then now here we are in mid-December. And uh, the reason being is we don't set deadlines. And, and, and the reason is this we have a great team. They're very capable. They're amazing. They, they, they do some, uh, it blows my mind half the time and, or most of the time, but uh, we are innovating constantly and we don't, because this stuff doesn't exist, we have to create it from scratch. Like I always say, we're creating a better rocket because there was no rocket to begin with to get us to where we want to go. And so in that we learn and sometimes things just don't work. We have these plans and schematics and we architect the solution and then we build it and it's like, up. Oh, didn't quite feel right, didn't work right. And, you know, our team is, is is deep diving into how we can fix it. And sometimes we either start over or we just tweak it. And um, that's how we got to where we are. So we have goals and we have timelines that we want to shoot for, but sometimes things don't work out. And it's just how it is, especially with a new company like Starsake. We're a startup, we're new, we're just launching version one. And in a lot of cases, if you're familiar with how, you know, agile development goes and, and releasing an MVP, a minimum viable product to market, is you start with as simple as you can you go out there you get market feedback and you 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 revise that and and, and add on and bolt on and the main thing is in those models is getting that feedback and in those test cases use cases this was a little bit different that'd be kind of in in so many ways like us launching an iphone that couldn't make phone calls or maybe dropped calls half the time, couldn't use the internet and the touch screen only worked halfway. It just would, it would be a waste of time. It wouldn't work. And so we have to make sure all the components because they're interconnected that they work. And so that's why this has taken so long, but I will say we're right there. We're wrapping up the last couple pieces on the development side uh, of some of the adjustments that I'm going to show you here in just a second. Um, and really it's just come down to us preparing for launch. So if I would to say, what have we been up to? the last 60 days, it's preparing, preparing for the market, preparing for the demand uh, that our creators are going to hold us accountable to, that the users are going to hold us to, and making sure everything is is going where it should, how it should. Uh, so that's where we're at. We are scheduled, and I'll go through a roadmap here at the end of this update uh, as quickly as I can. Um, we are scheduled for a, it looks like, beginning of January, early January release of version one, and to start onboarding and really working with these artists and uh, brands on Starsec so we can do a, a full launch later in the month of January. Just because here we are, it's mid-December, we've got holidays around the corner, and I didn't want to press the team too hard. Uh, they've been working seven days a week already. Um, they're, they're just, they're amazing. 
but here we are at the holidays and uh, it just adds, you know, doing a launch over the holidays would just be very stressful on everyone. And it just makes sense, like let everybody go to their families, spend the holidays together and then come back, roll this out early January and we can all have a great 2023. So it just felt right. So we've stuck with it. Plus, I feel much pr more prepared now than I did back in November. And uh, we've learned a lot since then. So uh, things we've worked on is creating the infrastructure that we needed to be in place to handle the volume and the attention. Uh, <clears throat> as much as I'd like to just slowly roll this out, I have a feeling and we're pretty confident that it's not going to be that uh, just because of the nature of our product. Uh, so we're you know, bringing on support staff, support agents and supervisors to be able to handle the queries that come in. So things like support, we want to make sure our chat is answered within or our live chat is within a two hour window or ticket support within 24 hours. And so setting up the procedures and systems and methods that are necessary to do that. Um, so we've got that pretty much handled. We're ready to go and we're just creating the documentation so we're ready to scale uh, as we grow. Um, also, the training and onboarding, which is a monster project because we have a very um, dynamic product. There's not just one way to use Starstake. It's not like we're creating a software to that crops your photo to put on Instagram. Um, it's, it's very complex. You've got financial systems. You've got asset generation. You've got marketing. You've got page builders. You've got uh, dashboards and crater hubs and just there's so many moving pieces and they all talk to each other. So they have to work uh, synergistically together. So uh, the training and onboarding was really critical for us because our business model is based around creators and users using and buying assets. It's not about us because there is no upfront fees to use Starstakes. So, you know, you can go in there and start creating assets and we want to give you every tool, every advantage to go out to the market and sell. And we realize that because that's that's our business model. We make money when everybody starts selling and, and builds their own economies. But also we have to realize what tools and what support can we provide through workshops and mint maps and frameworks and, and, and helping people, you know, find that because star power alone will not sell nfts will not build these economies it's going to take you know an understanding for the market and we have some really cool creative ways to to help with that so we've been working on that and then we've also really paid attention to okay what kind of legal support do we need you know we're a new company any new company should have it. it's just the nature of the world that we live in um, especially now with you know you see these irresponsible organizations just doing things improperly and so we wanted to separate ourselves and not only for us as a company and but also for the brands that are being attached the artists and their names to have them feel confident so we brought in one of the top legal firms in the country um, Nelson Mullins and they're one of the biggest I think uh, intellectual property firms that deals in not only cryptocurrency but blockchain uh, development new startups as well as uh, nfts and, and even though there's the regulation and laws are so loose and we wanted to pre prepare for what is today and what could be tomorrow uh, even though again things change so fast so we just are trying to be as prepared as we can as well as make sure that we say the right things how we need to say them to uh, make sure the consumer understands what they're buying what they're getting involved in and, and what are the advantages or maybe disadvantages or any anything like that. And so um, we brought in uh, Nelson Mullins. They've been great. They did full risk assessment of everything. They're helping with language. We also brought in our own in-house counsel uh, attorney to handle things like the agreements from terms of service and making sure that's up to par, um, privacy policies, creator agreements, agent agreements, all the different types of agreements that happen when you're dealing with intellectual property. So um, we did that. Ramping that up has been um, it's been it's been a journey. So, but that's where we are. And now, what I want to do is I'm going to jump on the computer. We're going to, I'm going to show you some of the cool developments and the upgrades to some of the product uh, components and features, and talk about really our angle of focus, and that is usability and accessibility. So, let me jump on, and I'll give you a little sneak peek of some really cool stuff. Okay, so inside of Starstake, what I wanted to the first thing I wanted to show was the new NFT box and some of the process. Now, as we had mentioned before, it's really important to us to give creators the, the simplest interface possible to be able to mint quickly and to, to create decisions quickly on the fly and to also be able to execute their plans uh, fairly effectively and, and simply. So 
One of those things, if I go in here um, to Creator Hub, for example, and this is the Creator Hub is where creators go to create all their assets. So we have the creation zone over here on the left where I can edit my star profile, which is like my star homepage. And then on the left, we have SNFTs for star stake NFTs, which are kind of like the mothership NFT. And then we have our NFT bucks. So if I go into here, I'm going to show you some of the new developments that we recently added. It's super cool, um, but it's going to just make it a better product in general. And this was just from our testing. So under, um, let's see here, under create bucks, uh, obviously I can create a collection, NFT bucks or a bundle. A bundle is where I can sell multiple bucks in a, in a batch, perhaps create a cool offer there, um, incentives and such. But really what I'm going to show you is, is when it comes down to minting one buck, uh, an individual, some of the things we did. So, you know, we have the, the, the typical title. I can just put in new NFT buck, Okay, and I can choose a collection. So every buck must be inside of a collection. And the reason being is there's certain requirements that we wanted to put into place to protect the uh, the rarity tree. And what I mean by that is we didn't want people just coming in here and saying, oh, I'm just going to mint a bunch of legendaries, for example. And you'll lose that, what it means to be a legendary. People will abuse that. And, and it's just, uh, it's one of those things we had to say, okay, let's say for every collection, there's certain requirements. You have to start out with so many commons that on lock and uh, as you go and so let's just choose my Chris collection here <clears throat> and you'll notice these icons and each one of these represents a rarity the first is common then collectible rare ultra rare and then legendary now if, to choose a rarity that I want to mint that I want to create and it shows oh I can only create common I don't have any denominations yet I don't have any supply because I haven't created any but if I tried to go to just collectible, it says you must mint at least four denominations of common to unlock collectible with a supply of 1,000 each, right? So for me to even mint or start creating collectible bucks, I would have to follow those instructions and get at least four different denominations. So let's do that. Let's do a common. Let's choose a denomination. Let's just choose, um, let's choose 500. And I can enter the supply. I'll just say, okay, there's a thousand of these available. Um, and then what we did is one of the things that we wanted to make sure we did, because the bucks have a unique dimensions. They're very skinny and tall, kind of like money, I guess you would, like a dollar bill. Um, and so we didn't want a bunch of squished images. And this was kind of a, an apparent problem as we were testing this. We just saw a bunch of demo stuff in the marketplace and it looked awful. It was like all this artwork was just really squished in the size of this kind of vertical um, land, um a vertical uh, aspect ratio. So let's say I wanted to create a buck. Uh, let's just find something that's wider. Let me see here. <clears throat> um, let's see. Let's just do, um, let's just take one of these mission NFTs, for example. I can open this up. And so here I can just drag and crop the image. So it will keep the aspect ratio the same as the buck. So I can just move this around now and center my image and then hit crop. And what the nice thing is, is it'll go ahead and just crop that for me. So there, we won't see any squished images. Um, it's up to the, the creator to align that or just upload an exact dimensions uh, for that. Also, um, after you do that, you can select a design style. So we created, you know, bucks have a very unique design and, and we do this to uh, maintain the integrity of what a buck an nft buck is it's denominational value uh, it's price stability those things because it's used as a utility inside of star Sake to make purchases it's basically in-app currency so we have guidelines which you can view by clicking a link but if you don't want to add like the denomination values and do any photoshop work um, you can just choose one of our overlays and it'll automatically add the um, the denomination value, the rarity based on what I already selected. It adds the seals, all of that. And it may fit your artwork. It may not. So we have dark versions. We have light versions. Um, we have um, some different uh, color schemes here. You can see here's the common purple. That looks pretty good. So I'll just leave that. And so I can mint that uh, simply like that. And just literally in a matter of seconds, I have my own NFT bucks. I can go up in the marketplace. People can buy them, collect them or spend them on the marketplace on other assets within store stake. Super cool. Or you could gift them. I mean, think about it. You could gift a 500 NFT bucks to, to your grandchildren, to your friends, to your family. And it's as good as cash. They can just go on there and they can collect that, or they can come back to star stake and cash that out for USDC if they wanted to, which I also have a really awesome update for you. So on top of that, what we did is we wanted to allow different file types. 
Because some people, I mean, your art is your art is kind of subjective. It could be an illustration. It could be a photo. It could be a drawing that you did, but it could also be a video or an animation. So what might that look like? Let's take a look at that. So let's just go ahead and I'm just going to choose none for the overlay. I'm going to delete this and let's go ahead and upload what a video might look like, a video book. So I'll go ahead and upload an MP4. And there it is. So um, the video is right within the buck. And if I hover over it, you can see the MP4 will automatically play. So you can imagine in the marketplace, all these bucks, if you hover over them, you can have video bucks, Santa bucks. You could have people playing music. I mean, whatever you would like, um, you could build it into your own basically in-app currency. So it just broadens the spectrum of the creativity that can happen. Um, there is a file size limit, so it's not like you could put a movie in there or something. And obviously you have to own your own IP. It has to be original content. Um, but it just opens the door to some new possibilities of having these. Imagine having a video message to somebody you care about and sending them a buck that they can then use to spend on your stuff or somebody else's stuff or collecting it, holding on to it or selling it on OpenSea to the secondary market out there. It's just, it just opens up so many cool possibilities. So we wanted to enable that right out of the gate and make it seamless, easy. Now you can't use overlays with the videos because that's obviously you'd have to, you put a, a graphic file on top of a video it wouldn't work. So you have to upload the video with your own template and we give you the, the, the graphic files so you can edit the price and have your own seals and all that kind of cool stuff. So, um, but that's it. And that's all there is to it. That is video bucks. And that is the new um, rarity, rarity tree requirement. So as you go down, you can just learn, oh, okay, to get ultra rare, I must have at least two denominations of rare uh, with a 250 supply of each. So and the, the system will cross check that. And that's per collection. So if I if I use a different collection, then I have to follow that same rarity tree and those requirements. So this way, you know, we want a lot of common bucks out there because those are things people can spend. And then we also want those rare and ultra rares to be collectibles as artwork and, and so forth. So that is the uh, new bucks edition that I'm super, super excited about that. It's going to be fun to see. Imagine if you go into, let's see if I can do this. Um, nope, not this page, but imagine uh, I can actually do it here in the NFT Bucks marketplace and you have all these different collections and bucks and you're shopping like, here's a video. I mean, how cool is that to be able to see? I think that's probably a, a GIF file. Um, and these are just some of our tests that the developers put in here. Um, but you could have videos and see these things and you could go and look under collections and, and you know, view collection and check out all the different bucks. And obviously these are just test bucks, but um, you know, pretty cool stuff. So I'm really excited to see all the, the fun things. And then we have bundles, which are like groups of bucks, uh, which I think a lot of you know about. So you can see all the common bucks in here. And if there were other rarities, those would be in there. Um, so the bundles are all fully active. And then of course we have um, the collections and then the bucks themselves. So anyways, this is all pretty much good to go. Uh, we're just uh, tightening up some of those things. The other thing I wanted to show you was how the agent and manager system worked real quick. Uh, let me just go back here. So the agent system is for... Um, Agents out there in the market that have or represent artists already, um, they can bring them to the Star Stake platform and they get a percentage of sales from those artists. It's not an affiliate program. It's people that are agencies that already manage artists uh, or have relationships with those artists. Um, and so that's how that works. But we also have a manager program and a manager, anybody can be a manager as it will stand. And that's just someone who helps these artists manage and mint and build their economy. And so this came up because we realized, man, a lot of these artists just, they're not going to be doing this themselves. They're going to have help and they need help. And so um, it also creates a great opportunity for them to get that and to allow them into their own star state creator hub without having to give their wallet away, their, their seed phrases or anything like that. Obviously it's web three, so it doesn't use a username and password. It's all connected through a wallet. So we had to solve that problem, but now an artist can add a manager. I'll show you. In fact, I'll go to Creator Hub. Actually, I'll go to Stake Hub. So this account, this wallet I'm logged into has, uh, I'm an agent and a manager. So this is what it would look like. It's just a test account. So it's called Star Stake, uh, Star Staker Agent. And so in here, I can see all my stats. You know, I have my star book. How many active stars do I have as an agent? How, how much, what are my earnings there? How many credits do I have? Meaning credits represent how many artists I can bring to the platform. Um, they kind of hold the keys of the kingdom in, in so many ways. And then it just shows the 
earnings uh, of what I'm earning as an agent. And it shows uh, the NFTs, the bucks, and the Axis NFTs that are sold through all the artists that I might have or represent. And then I can go to my stars and I can see, okay, here's a test star, for example. Um, I can check out their profile. Um, and I can also view sales. So as an agent, I can monitor all the progress. Do they have a manager? How many fans or stakers do they have? What's the agent's percentage? Are they active, inactive? What are the actual performance numbers for this specific star? Um, all these things, whether they're wallet address, email, I can contact them or get support right through this portal. Um, so it's all ready to accommodate uh, agents to help their stars. Same goes for managers. So it's very similar. I can come in here and I can say, oh, what are the stars? Oh, I manage test star, right? And I can go in here, same thing. I can view oh, this person has 235 stakers. My manager fee is 5%. And this is important because all the different agents and managers and agencies we've talked to so far um, that are helping these stars with minting and creating, um, I, I guess, creating uh, NFTs or tokens is they have to chase down the money. It's very, there's no automated way for them to get paid as an agency and, and assist the people. And it's complicated. They have to create wallets for them. Whereas this way, the cool thing that, that we have here is um, if I go into my manager account and I go in here, I can go to visit the Stars Creator Hub. If I click this, what's going to happen is you'll see this red text. Now I'm actually logged in as star test star. So the star that I'm managing, I can actually get into their creator hub. Okay, so I can come in here and I can work on their different assets. If it's turned on, um, the star has the choice of giving those permissions. So you can notice I can't click on, I can't click on any other things in this stars portal, right? The only thing that's turned on are the things that I'm responsible for managing. So I can go in here and I can create bucks for that artist. And as you see, it says logged in as this star, their wallet address. And so I don't have to ever get any kind of credentials for that user, that star's wallet. So it keeps everything secure. I can't touch the money. All I'm doing is helping manage and, and grow their economy, assist them in, in the creation process, okay? And even management. So, and then all I have to do is click log out and it logs me out from, I think probably, there we go. And then it logs me out. Now I'm back to my manager portal again, okay? So, and I have my own SNFTs or I can do the things that I want to do here. Um, so again, it's, it's really important because this was a huge need in the marketplace. It now allows growth for agencies to start bringing uh, artists into star stake, managing them. They never have to chase the money. It's just automatic. The star says, hey, all right, your fee for to manage me is 20%. And that just comes right out of the smart contract. And it puts the money where it's supposed to go. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. And so it eliminates that hassle and, and, and error, human error and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And we always have cross checks. So the stars have to approve these things. Um, and, and there's just certain protocols and, and procedures that have to happen for that to work. So these are just a couple really awesome updates that we put into place. Other than that, um, some of the things that we focus on, I'm going to mention a really big update um, is as I always talk about accessibility and accessibility for users, you know, even down to the wallet, you know, connecting your wallet is really important. Um, and we have different wallets. So you can use MetaMask. We have Magic, which is also Fortmatic. Um, so we'll have really easy ways for you to connect a wallet, especially for people that don't even know what a wallet is. Literally, you don't have to install plugins or extensions or apps on your phone. You'll be able to do it just by putting an email or a phone number and it can help you create a wallet on the blockchain within Starstake. So it's super cool. And we wanted to also take away the cryptocurrency reliance. And you never have to really deal with any cryptocurrency on Starstake. You'll notice. So one of the cool things is you'll be able to come in here and let's just say I went to the marketplace. Uh, let's see if, if I go to browse bucks. Let's say I wanted to buy uh, a buck. I don't know. Let me find this cool buck. Chris test buck because it's a cool test. I can just add it to cart. Again, accessibility and, and usability is, look, the shopping cart model is very familiar. We use it on Amazon. Add to cart, add to cart. Now you can add your bucks to cart. I had this one that was already in there. Let's get rid of that. But uh, now I have 100 bucks in my cart. I go to checkout. And here, it's really cool. I don't have to use cryptocurrency to buy this. Even though it's a blockchain Web3 application that I could actually use a credit card. So we were working with a company uh, very closely to allow credit card transactions to purchase bucks. So I'll be able to just use my credit card, buy this NFT. And then I, once I, I hold that, then I can use that to buy other NFTs. And so um, these are price stabilized. So that $100 NFT buck will always be worth $100. So it 
takes that credit card transaction, takes the, the dollars and puts it into a smart contract to stabilize it. And whenever I decide to spend it, I can spend it and it, the money goes where it should. If I decide not to spend it, after I own this, I could convert it right back into US dollar coins if I want it to. So that brings up a really, really big thing that we've been working on is, okay, let's say you made, you earned rewards. Let's say you sold NFTs as a creator and you made a bunch of money on Starstake and that money is in your stake hub and you can view it uh, under your stats here. And it says, oh, you earned your rewards. Let's say I earned $1,000 and it's sitting in your balance. Um, if I wanted to cash out, you would come down here and I put in you know, $1,000 or whatever I had if I had it available, I'd hit cash out. It would say, do I want to cash out those earnings? Yes. And it would give me NFT bucks as a reward. And the reason being is because we want obviously to keep money in the system. We want people to be able to spend that too. And it's just a really easy way. But once I have those reward bucks, I can then come over here to convert those bucks. And I just come in here, I'll select the buck if I had any in here. Uh, I'm bucks broke, apparently. And so I would just select it, I would convert it, and it would just convert it right into US dollar coins, right for me, right into my wallet. So I come into here, and I would see, okay, I have so much um, USDC uh, on Poly. I would have the USDC right in my wallet. Well, then what? Right. So we knew there was going to be a problem. How do I actually take those U.S. dollar coins, go to an exchange, convert those to U.S. dollars, whatever the, the, the currency is and where I'm at, and then get those into a bank account? It's a process. It's a hassle. And so we are working with a company to produce the very first Star State credit card. It's, it's similar to a debit card, but it's an actual credit card. So now you'll be able to get a Star State card. And as soon as you cash out those earnings, those, those rewards, whatever they are, and you convert those to USDC, you'll be able to just top up your debit card, just like maybe Crypto.com has it and BitPay and some of these other banks uh, are building on this just to make you know, Web3 more usable because now you can cash out those rewards, put them right onto your debit or your credit card, um, so there's like a, a credit card or a debit card, and then I can just go buy gas or groceries or, or make bill payments, whatever I want to do. And they handle all the KYC, they handle everything. Uh, we'll just have our own interface where you can just hit top up and you can put that money on your card and go about your day. You don't have to go create an exchange account and we don't want to involve ourselves with other platforms. Is, is, at least as amount of possible. So there aren't any dependencies for us and we can control things uh, to make sure your user experience is, is the best. So that's something we're really excited about. Um, we're gonna have custom cards. We'll have perks on those. We're working on that now where we'll have different cards. So if you're a creator and say you, you sell a, a million dollars worth of NFTs, that status will allow you to get like a black card. And again, it's these premium credit cards that you can just top up from your earnings. So you don't have to figure out the exchange process and deposit process and all of that. It just takes that out of the equation. And again, it comes down to usability and accessibility. Okay, so super excited about that. We've even got some awesome stuff that we're working on for premium uh, branded cards for certain AAA artists and brands. Uh, we're working on building that model as well simultaneously. So how cool would that be if there was a, uh, a Jay-Z card, for example, and he just offered that you know, star stake Jay Z credit card to just his stakers of his NFTs. So now he can use that again as a tool to go out to his audience to bring them into his economy. And that just offers another income stream for him to offer that nobody else is offering. And so again, it just we want to put ourselves up there as uh, something that is definitely real world usable. Um, and also reducing gas fees, we're working on uh, eliminating all gas fees on the platform. So uh, initially, I think for a version one launch, we'll We'll probably deposit Matic into your wallet automatically. You won't even know it. So when you get asked for gas fees, you'll just be able to pay it. And we're talking like Matic's like fractions of a penny. So it's super easy. But we also have a service that we'll be using that will actually, we'll just cover. We'll pay all gas fees. So there is no gas fee um, used and you don't ever have to cover that. So that's one thing that we've worked really hard on. Um, you know, NFT bucks solves, you know, the the dependency and having to use crypto. You don't have to use crypto at all whatsoever on the platform. Uh, it eliminates that. Um, we simplify the user experience, as I showed you, just to make things very easy. Again, like within Creator Hub, everything is linear. I could go to create uh, a SNFT, for example, and I could go mint new SNFT, and there's basically just these steps. Create the details, build my page, create an offer. You know, what kind of packages do I want to bundle together with access NFTs and then review and submit and put it onto the platform. 
Okay, um, access NFTs work the same way. I can come in here and create an access and create a collection and put a bunch of t-shirts in access NFTs. So similar to Bucks, I would put whatever that product is, whatever the rarity is. And, um, you know, I could have a collection of shirts or golf clubs or whatever it is, content, anything, backstage passes, tickets, anything. Um, these are redeemable NFTs that has like a very well thought out elaborate e-commerce model um you know where you know if somebody buys something you have a protection period as a consumer to make sure you get the thing that you you purchased and also for creators there's um a period that protects them too for anybody that wants to try to get away with getting something for free so um other than that uh these are have been all amazing amazing uh developments it's ready to go we're just wrapping up a couple uh back-end pieces and doing some further testing and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll we're uploading the uh getting started content the onboarding content some of the perks and so forth so um that's it i don't want to take too much uh, other time i think i mentioned everything um Really, again, Starstake has been built to fit into the world we currently live in. Yes, it's technology, and we're trying to really build a better rocket to help uh, you know consumers and, and 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 brands connect together in new ways, and for creators to have better control over monetizing their art and and and, and really communicating and delivering value to their audience. Uh, but other than that, we want to coexist with other things. We're not trying to compete against you know Facebook or, or TikTok or anything like that. We don't even do that stuff. It's just we want to give a separate opportunity to creators to build entire economies, and we're going to continue to build applications and features in here. And I'm going to share some of with, uh, some things with you at the end and show you some really cool stuff we're building on the side uh, to deploy in version uh, 1.2 and, and 2.0 and, and so forth to solve more problems and create even better innovations in Web3 and not just look at NFTs for selling NFT sake, right? Like just artwork that nobody realizes the value and hence what you're seeing in the NFT market. Nobody was really thinking about how can this integrate into the real world? And that's exactly the way and the approach that we took Star Stakes. So with that, um, back to you guys. Thanks everybody. I will see you here a little bit later, but that is a quick update. And uh, actually before we do that, what I will do is I just run down real quick what our roadmap looks like so you can have idea an idea of where we're going and what's coming up next. So real quick, I'll show share with you maybe the next 12 to 18 months and, uh, and then we can get going on the rest of this water episode. All right, so this is the uh, view of the roadmap, and the roadmap is really exciting because obviously this can change at any time, but this is where we're headed. This is our roadmap internally that uh, we're looking at, and here we are in December 2022, halfway through the month here, holidays right around the corner, and New Year's right right there, and you know, this month has been primarily just completing the tech, testing it, getting V1 ready to roll out in January, early January, and also putting in QA and to place, uh, uh, you know, quality assurance to make sure things are working, uh, proper testing protocols, just so we can always have a pulse on what's up, what's down, our downtime, you know, things like that. And then also, you know, our focus was getting, you know, uh, Nelson Mullins involved with our legal uh, needs that we need and having our own in-house counsel uh, and attorney to be able to handle our agreements and, and just tidying everything up there. And then also building out our support. And so, Preparation is is what I would say this month is all about, the remainder of the year. Come January 2023, we have V1 rollout. And V1 rollout is is simply just turning on uh, Creator Hub, Stake Hub, uh, letting creators start to onboard, going through our workshops, going through our walkthroughs, uh, using our frameworks. And we'll be building their economies with them, which is great. So as a launch artist, you're going to have our direct support. Um, and then... Um, you know, basically preparing them for their launch as soon as we turn on the other things. So Creator Hub will be fully functional. You can create your own Star Stake NFTs, your NFT bucks. Uh, you'll be able to create your access NFTs and prepare your star profiles and just get everything ready. You can actually start selling when we launch V1, you start selling your own NFT buck collections and, and getting your audience involved. And, and so those things. So it's all about, you know, bringing the bucks to market, working that out, letting people purchase those, and then preparing the other assets for a, a, a 
a, a formal uh, launch for these launch artists. Okay, so it's really an artist selection process that'll be happening in January where we will be working with select artists that we kind of handpick or we're referred to here through agents already that we have relationships with uh, and so forth and uh, really prioritizing you know, uh, specific artists just because we want to make sure everything's worked out on this initial uh, rollout. So onboarding them, training them, et cetera. And then also get feedback and make the proper adjustments before we actually turn on their assets, their star stake NFTs. And we want to make sure that everything goes smooth for all the, the different creators on the platform. And that's January. Come February, March uh, of 2023, we're looking at uh, really opening up the official marketplace for launch. So after January, you know, if we look at onboarding for about 30 days and then we'll schedule when we feel like everything is ready to go, we'll turn the switch where artists will be able to start to po post their star stake NFTs, access NFTs, their bucks, everything will be live in the marketplace. And so we'll, you know, cross promote our artists and we'll be uh, doing some really fun promotions at that time. So that's the official marketplace launch where all assets go live uh, for purchase. Um, we'll be doing artist promotions, as I just mentioned, and then um, the mission game will be released during that time as well, which is really exciting. So that's the reason that has to be done at the same time as the official marketplace launch is because the mission game is to integrate people into this world, this new universe, and let people explore Star Stake in a fun kind of gamified way. So um, that will be coming around the same time. Now, out, outward looking, if you look at Q2, Q3 of 2023, is really our aggressive customer acquisition, working with brands and really being aggressive about attracting the right people and creators to increase the value of Starstake. We have a, a giant waiting list right now, but uh, as we start working through that and rolling things out steadily um, and, and monitoring everything, then we'll be more aggressive come the second quarter about attracting you know bigger brands and bigger opportunities. Um, so that's kind of that plan there. And then also doing marketing and you know uh, collaborations and such. So uh, we also will be looking at uh, releasing v2 features and you guys will see that at the end i'll go through some of the new features that we're actually in development right now that are in a backlog that we'll release in v2 so um things like launch hub drop center uh api integrations to shopping carts like your shopify is and such uh collaborations with other brands that we're working with and, and all these things and then q3 is we're looking at starcon and having our first big event where we'll have artists there uh, great entertainment great opportunities and really show how Web3 can integrate in this amazing new environment that we're in, in a way that nobody has ever experienced before. And I can tell you this because I've done events before in the past. They've been uh, very successful, and I feel like we got the formula down. But this model, what Star Stake is doing here, is the perfect situation for an, a live event. Think about it. You can go there and imagine if you had you know, different artists and stars. So not only are you getting entertained, but then they can offer you amazing access and amazing opportunities at the same time where literally in your seat people are just trying to buy these nfts trying to buy this access to maybe a, a session with them or a backstage pass or merchandise that is limited and it's just offered at that event and so one it's a great launch pad for artists especially upcoming artists but also a great opportunity for fans to connect with even their favorite artists and brands and so it's the perfect event model and we've talked through this and we'll be working through this and after the new year and preparing for that Q3 and perhaps into Q4. So um, very, very excited. I believe that's going to be a, an enormous opportunity for Star State to grow and get attention. And um, I think our roadmap to get there is pretty clear. So that is our roadmap. I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully that uh, makes some sense. Uh, I'm super excited about it. We're on track with everything that we're doing and uh, it will just continue to grow and scale and we'll do everything we have to, to, to be successful and bring the best product to market. In the beginning, humans looked to the stars for answers, a view of where we came from, and in some ways, what we can become. Today, when we look to the sky, we wonder if we're alone and how far we can go. We've come a long way in the last 20 years. 
creating experiences that through art and technology have transported us to discover new stars of all types. Some stars help connect and bring us together. Others transport us to all new worlds with breathtaking adventures. We see stars as greater than life figures, magical moments and fantastical achievements. We live amongst these stars every day. Crafting Star Steak, we are reminded that the things we love most don't come from the stars above, but from the ones all around us. Star Steak is the first NFT-based royalty marketplace, bringing the world's greatest creations and its creators together with fans and consumers to create even greater opportunities. More than that, Star Steak is about access. An entirely new economy built solely on our connections to the things we use and enjoy. Star Steak is something we've dreamt of having, and it's only now that we have the hardware, the technology, and the experience to push our creative boundaries even further. In it, we invite you to join Astra, the official prologue to your journey into Star Steak. For the first time, we'll provide an inside look at what makes this next generation platform so important and how you can forge new connections to your great creations. As a fan, discover new opportunities inside the NFT-based marketplace with access to your favorite stars, rewards, and royalties. We have a lot to share. Together, let's begin the journey to go beyond blockchain and explore the possibilities of our progress as creators and consumers. We hope you'll join Astra to find your way to Star Stake and go with us on the journey to discover the next generation of startups.